Will Smith. What is he? Part 6. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. So far, we've learnt about a turbulent childhood for Will Smith and the presence of a clear narcissist in his life, which suggests that the genetic predisposition may well have been passed on to him. He has clear involvement in a lack of control environment, which also means that the narcissist cake could well have been baked, and that's what he has become. We've also seen, however, suggestions that his behaviours have taken him in a different manner. But how are we able to determine this? It could possibly be if the genetic predisposition has skipped him. This can happen. But it's evident that there are strong narcissistic traits with Smith, as you'd expect with someone who is a showman, a performer, an entertainer, an actor, a singer. He exhibits vanity, the clothes that he wears. He exhibits pride. He show, the exhibits showcasing. We've also seen anger and jealousy, but more of that later on. So it's clear that he has strong narcissistic traits. That doesn't mean that somebody's necessarily a narcissist. A narcissistic individual has strong narcissistic traits. Some empathic individuals can have strong narcissistic traits with empathic traits that are even stronger that keep them in check. The information that we've seen so far portrays an individual with this turbulent childhood, but then made a conscious decision to be the best at what he did in order to allow him to survive. Was this is narcissism imposing its presence on him, finding a way for him to assert control by being driven and having a very industrious approach to both music and especially film? Or was this quite simply the response of a traumatised individual who saw that this was an alternative way of coping to use humour and then attain fame? Let's consider the explanation of the evidence further. Smith was raised in a Baptist household and attended a Roman Catholic school and church. In a 2013 interview, he said he did not identify as religious. In 2015, Smith said in an interview with the Christian Post that his Christian faith, which was instilled in him by his grandmother, notice that she is evident again, a possible intervener, helped him to accurately portray Bennett Omalu in concussion, saying, She was my spiritual teacher. She was that grandmother at the church, the one having the kids doing the Easter presentations and putting on the Christmas plays, and her kids and grandkids had to be first. She was the most spiritually certain person that I had ever met in my entire life, even to the point that when she was dying she was happy, like she was really excited about going to heaven. Either that, or she was off her tits on the morphine. What about politics? Well, Smith has previously donated the huge sum of $4,600, strange amount, to the 2008 presidential campaign of Democrat Barack Obama. In 2009, Smith and his wife hosted a Nobel Peace Prize concert in Oslo, Norway, to celebrate Obama's winning of the prize. In 2012, Smith stated he supported legalising same-sex marriage. That demonstrates potential emotional empathy by supporting such a process. In 2021, Smith announced that the production of his upcoming film Emancipation is being pulled from Georgia because of the recent passage of the Election Integrity Act of 2021, which critics view as a restrictive voting law negatively impacting non-white voters. Smith and the director released a joint statement. We cannot in good conscience provide economic support to a government that enacts regressive voting laws that are designed to restrict voter access. Again, this might be seen as the demonstration of emotional empathy for people affected and actually doing something about it. And here we see a notable marker. Narcissists invariably utilise an economy of effort. If we can get what we need by just talking about it rather than doing, then that's what will happen. And you've seen this happen repeatedly with somebody called Harry's wife. Now, of course, making donations can be seen to be rather easy for somebody who is astronomically wealthy. However, moving the production of a film is an action rather than words. It's not beyond the wit of a narcissist, of course, to engage in certain actions to achieve what they want. But it is noteworthy 
that Smith is engaged in an action rather than just words, to stand behind the sentiment that shows possibly emotional empathy, certainly cognitive empathy. Smith has, attend, has supported the following charities, 46664, Dream Foundation, Elton John AIDS Foundation, Entertainment Industry Foundation, Feeding America, Florida, Florida Marlins Community Foundation, Fulfillment Fund, Live Strong, but he was pleased about that, Living Classrooms Foundation, Make-A-Wish Foundation, Miami Children's Hospital Foundation, Motion Picture and Television Fund Foundation, Pact, Red Cross, Stand Up to Cancer, Will and Jada Smith Family Foundation, Youth Health Empowerment. Quite the roster of charitable support, but again, might this just be done for facade management, allowing an assertion of control of coming across as the good guy? And after all, he's got oodles of cash, and therefore being involved in charity is not such the uh, martyr act as it might be for someone who is less wealthy. We now turn to a GQ interview, which Smith participated in. Rather than go through the entirety of the interview, I've taken excerpts from it, enable to, uh, enabling us to understand more about him and portray certain aspects of his behaviours. I've always avoided making films about slavery, Smith told his interviewer about an hour prior as they were sat in a production trailer. In the early part of my career, I didn't want to show black people in that light. I wanted to be a superhero, so I wanted to depict black excellence alongside my white counterparts. I wanted to play roles that you would give to Tom Cruise. And the first time I considered it was Django. But I didn't want to make a slavery film about vengeance. Is this emotional empathy for portraying black people in a particular light or facade management? Emancipation is different. It would be a disservice to think of it as a slavery movie, Smith explained to his interviewer. It's going to be a David Lean-style epic, he said, with the flavour of an action flick, more apocalypto than 12 years a slave. The story itself is not just about the dehumanising violence of slavery, it's also about perseverance, facade management or genuine emotional empathy. For decades, Will Smith was driven by the desire to be the biggest movie star on earth early in his career. He even came up with a formula based on the top 10 box office successes of all time. He achieved that goal effortlessly, ruling the July 4th weekend from 1996, Independence Day, to 2008, Hancock. But it's easy to forget how unlikely it was for a rapper turned actor. This demonstrates genuine ability. Some narcissists do exhibit genuine ability, but many it's manufactured or limited, or doesn't exist at all. But over the last 10 years, as Smith has become increasingly focused on evolving as a human being, a gulf has emerged between Will Smith the movie star and Will Smith the man. We've gotten glimpses of his efforts to close that gap in moments like last year's Fresh Prince of Bel Air reunion, when he sat down with the actor Jane Hubert and admitted culpability in her departure from the sitcom. Hubert has been quite damning of Smith and his behaviours, criticising him. With this, is this genuine contrition and recognition that he had done things wrong? Or is it simply grandstanding and false contrition for the purposes of fa facade management? There are also his appearance on his wife's Jada Pinkett Smith's Red Table Talk Facebook show, where he opened up about some of the most intimate details of their marriage, oversharing lack of boundary recognition, I suggest that it is. However, it's important to note that when he engages in such behaviour, who is it with? It might be the case that he engages in that of his own free will, but you might notice a pattern with regard to certain behaviours and the influence of his wife. And again, where he opens up about the most intimate details of their marriage, which could be seen as oversharing, too much information, sense of entitlement and absence of boundary recognition, but that might be as a consequence of an external stress or encourage him to engage in such behaviours. The talk birthed a red-eyed internet meme to rival the crying Jordan. He's embraced social media, a young man's game with the further of the aspiring actor he once was, not the global superstar he is today. Again, is that the energy of a particularly evolved narcissist that does it to assert control, 
or is it simply the almost childlike enthusiasm of an individual who just enjoys life? Prior to the interviewer speaking to Smith, his collaborators and friends told the interviewer what a great place he's in at the moment, that he's centred, deliberate, deliberate and even spiritual. Once settled in for a conversation, Smith told the interviewer that his aim now is strictly to tell stories that help people figure out how to be happy here. Grandiosity or genuine emotional empathy. The idea is I spent the first half of my life gathering, 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 and now the second half of my life is going to be giving it all away. Financial largesse done to assert control or genuine emotional empathy by sharing and supporting other people. Emancipation is an even bigger swing, the kind of big budget script that often lingers in pre-production for years, if not decades. Yet when Smith took the film to studios last year, George Floyd had died and the world had chained. The entire world was in lockdown. Watch what happened to George Floyd and stood up with one voice and said, we see it, we agree, Smith said. That's never happened before. And with that, the opportunities are unlike they've ever been. I've been trying to get movies made for a long time and the amount of money that Apple is paying to tell the story of emancipation is unprecedented. And these opportunities are globally present and plentiful. In a golden era for black talent in Hollywood, when funding is available for projects that once would have been overlooked, Smith sees no sense in wondering if the Apple is poisoned. I just want to encourage black Americans to take the acknowledgement and seize upon the present global opportunities, Smith continued. I would just like us to argue less about certain things and pay attention to the big ripe fruit. This does seem a rather down-to-earth approach. Naturally, I ask him which certain things we should be arguing about less, prompting Smith to slow his sentences and consider his words carefully. This is a pitfall area, he told me, before diving into one of the more contentious semantic debates in contemporary politics. So, abolish the police, defund the police. I would love it. I would love if we would just say, defund the bad police. It's almost like I want, as black Americans, for us to change our marketing for the new position we're in. So, critical race theory, just call it truth theory, Smith said. The pendulum is swinging in our direction beautifully. and There's a certain humility that will most capitalise on the moment for the future of black Americans. Without discounting the difficulty and the pain and the emotion, this is a difficult area to discuss. But I feel like the simplicity of Black Lives Matter was perfect. Anybody who tries to debate Black Lives Matter looks ridiculous. So when I talk about the marketing of our ideas, Black Lives Matters was perfection. From a standpoint of getting it done, Black Lives Matters gets it done. Defund the police doesn't get it done. No matter how good the ideas are, he continued. I'm not saying we shouldn't defund the police. I'm saying just don't say that because then people who would help you won't. This shows a sensible and constructive approach to the argument and isn't firebrand rhetoric that's often associated with more narrow-minded narcissists. Of course, it could be that he's a scheming and calculating aware narcissist who knows how to use the words in a careful manner. It's also evident as well that he's always embraced his colour in a means of looking for inclusivity as opposed to using it in a divisive way, which also tends to suggest the presence of emotional empathy. He doesn't, for instance, use it as a point of triangulation as a certain somebody who has fallen under the Tudor scope on, a numerous, on numerous occasions. You can't blame Smith if he's confident he knows the best way to tell a story. The man is a natural raconteur. This shows the presence of charisma and magnetism. Between takes, I watched as he recalled with his assistants the time while feeling concussion in Pittsburgh that they all attempted to make it to an evening showing of Denzel Washington's The Equalizer. The driver of the car, a dreadlock friend named Scotty with a Trinidadian accent and match, had missed the exit, forcing them to take a 22-minute loop in order to turn around. Then he missed it again. What's the point of going to the movies if you miss the trailers? Smith yelled out, prompting Scotty to throw their vehicle in reverse and back up on the freeway until they got to the exit. Smith told the story at least three times as additional people joined the circle, each new rendition featuring new details, new animated gestures, and an even more refined take on Scotty's accent until his staff and security were all giggling with glee. Is this an individual that engages in lengthy monologues in order to assert control, using humour to do so? Or is he able to genuinely correct, connect with people that he talks to, understanding what makes them laugh, and that he wants to do so, again exhibiting this people-pleasing aspect of him? Or 
Is he hogging the limelight, drinking up the fuel, asserting control? The suggestion that he tells the story at least three times and does so in a humorous way without belittling the individual concern suggests that he wants to tell the story, and when new people come, rather than leaving them part way through, he tells the story again so that they can enjoy it and others can listen to it again. It appears that that desire to please remains strong on a day-to-day -day basis. We will continue in part seven as we analyse more about Will Smith, continuing with this interview, which provides us with some excellent insight into what he is. Join me there.